Welcome back. It's so good to see you. So today, we are going to be doing true crime. It's been, I looked it up, it's been like four or five months, something like that, um, since the last video. And people have been like, girl, what are you going to do about a true crime? I've had this story in my phone for a while and I've just kept pushing it off because it's like research and a lot of work to do true crime. But I was, like, having sleeping issues the other day, and I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, let me just do this true crime story, let me do the research and write it out so I can get the video out for you. Um, okay, this is probably going to be the best true crime story you've ever heard. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I do want to mention that if you're looking for a very calm, relaxing type of ASMR, this ain't it. <laughs> I do have that on my channel. I have a true crime playlist on my, my channel. So if that's what you're looking for, just go to the playlist. Um, because I used to read them very slow and just read the facts and stuff like that. Um, which sometimes, you know, that's nice because it helps you sleep. But I've slowly been moving away from that because that's just not me. Like, if if you're new here or if you don't know, <laughs> I'm a very sarcastic, like, a very sarcastic person. And I know, true crime, being sarcastic and funny, that ain't right. I'm very respectful to the people who have passed on. I'm not as respectful to the people who've actually committed the murder because generally they're very stupid <laughs> and selfish, uh, jealous, that type of thing. And I, I like to choose true crime that happened a long, long time ago so that it's not offensive to anyone. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. It's, it's different. Just just know that it's different. I just, I want this to be more me. I want to have fun telling the story. I want you to be able to enjoy it. And I'm speaking in a soft-spoken voice so that maybe you can use it to go to sleep or relax or background noise. Um, but if you really want to hear the story, it'll be entertaining as well. Um, but I do want to mention that while I was writing the story, which is literally like a two column paragraph thing, I did fill in the blanks to what I believed happened. The facts of the story are, are true. I didn't change anything about the actual story. Um, but I also wrote it in the way that my mind works as I read true crime. So you're going to see little glimpses into my, my mind and how I envision things, which I think is quite funny. Um, but anyway, so yeah, and I wrote, I wrote everything down. So I will be looking over here as I read the story and you're going to hear like paper sounds. So I hope that's okay. Anyway, I really hope that you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get so, Mary Piercy uh, was born Mary Eleanor Wheeler in England, 1866. It, it didn't say what day she was born. Not that it really matters, but it just said 1866. So, see what I mean? Old, old, old true crimes. Okay, so there's not much about her childhood or how she grew up, anything like that, like literally nothing. So who knows? Um, but there is one thing. There was apparently an article written about her father, Thomas Wheeler, that claimed that he was convicted and hung for the murder of Edward Anstey. Except it was retracted for misinformation because it wasn't true, like even a little bit. 
um, there is absolutely no connection between her father and the murder of that man. I think that that article may have been written after this crime, uh, and someone just made it up so they could be all like, like father, like daughter, and all that, you know? Um, so, I'm like, this dad, he's at home reading his paper, smoking his pipe, <laughs> you know, old-timey stuff, and boy was he in for a surprise, right? <laughs> so anyway, back to the, the real true crime story. How she grew up, who knows? But I'm thinking not so good because somewhere in her late teens, late teens, early 20s, keep in mind, this is the 1800s. Mary had been dating a man named jo John Charles Piercy, who was a carpenter. Not that that matters, but it was mentioned. So I don't know if that profession was supposed to make him respectable or something. I, I don't know. Anyway, so Mary and John were living together. Unmarried. Talk about gasp. I mean, 1800s and these two were shacking up the scandal. Uh, she did take his name, so I guess that took away from that shameful act. So there's that. Um, but get this, John, the respectable carpenter, left Mary. 1800s, shacking up, just leaves Mary. After she took his name, I might add. Why did John leave Mary? Well, it seems Mary was sleeping around. What the hell is wrong with this girl? Like, cheating on John? Doesn't she know that he's a respected carpenter? <laughs> anyway, Mary's not starting out on a good note with me. I mean, how could she do that to John? So, after John's all like, girl, bye, Mary somehow starts living with a man named Frank Hogue, who, by the way, is not a carpenter. No, he was a furniture remover. Okay, let's pause for just a second. What the hell is that? A furniture remover? So in my mind, I'm like, is it a while you were sleeping type situation? You know, the Sandra Bullock movie where she lies and pretends that she's engaged to this man who is in a coma, who she is secretly in love with, but doesn't actually even know? Yeah, she lets his family think that they're engaged while she, you know, engaged and while her, her fake fiance is in a coma, she falls in love with his brother, Bill Pullman, who is a furniture remover. Oh, so like Frank Hogue, the furniture remover. See, it all connects. So, in the movie, don't get mad at me for spoiling the movie, it's like 30 years old, so if you haven't seen it by now, that's on you. Anyway, so in the movie, Bill Pullman gets all whiny because this job of removing furniture is gross. Because they have to wait for people to die, and then remove their furniture, and then resell it. But he's all like, I don't want to deal with dead people's furniture, I want to make my own. So being a carpenter apparently is better. <laughs> anyway, so Frank Hogue is basically Bill Pullman. They got stuff in common, right? Except Frank is no Bill Pullman. Why, you may be asking? Well, Frank, who is dating and living with Mary? That's right, we're back on the true crime story. We're done. We're done with the movie. <laughs> so Frank, just to make it clear, is not Bill Pullman or a carpenter, is dating and living with Mary. This man has at least, at least one other lover. Her name is Phoebe Stiles. And Mary knows about Phoebe. Is she okay with Phoebe? 
I don't know. Would you be happy about Phoebe? I'd want to be mad at Phoebe, but she's not in the wrong. I'd be really mad at Frank. But, come on, can Mary really, really be mad at Frank? For cheating? I mean, karma? <laughs> That's probably how they started living together anyway. You know, she cheated on John, the respectable carpenter, with Frank. And now, Frank is cheating on Mary with Phoebe. So, you know, karma, right? So, one day... Frank comes to Mary and is all like, hey girl, we need to talk. Uh oh. So, Frank's all like, yo Mary, you know about my side piece, right? And she's like, yeah, Phoebe, what's up? <sighs> well, Phoebe's pregnant. So Mary's all like, how could this happen? <laughs> how could you let this happen? And Frank's like, I don't know, I was doing our usual, our usual foolproof technique, you know, 1800 style. And I guess she moved when I told her not to, and well, things happened. You know how it is, what can you do about it, right? Mary was in shock and told him what he was going to do about it. So Mary insisted that Frank marry Phoebe. And Frank is like, I'm not about that life. I'm not going to do this. There's no way. But somehow Mary convinced Frank this is happening. Basically forcing the marriage. That's weird, right? Like, who's going to be like, you're with me, but you should totally marry your side piece. Like, what? No. Anyway, so Frank and Phoebe get married. I don't know if Phoebe knew about Mary at this time or not. Um, so after the two get married, Phoebe had a daughter who she also named Phoebe. Really uh, branched out with that one, Phoebe. Okay, so about a year and a half go by. Mary and Frank are still going strong despite the fact that Frank is married to Phoebe and they have a kid together. At least that was Mary's perspective. I'm thinking that Frank started to enjoy family life. Being a dad, being a husband, you know, normal family life. I think he started feeling bad about their situation. Um, you know, good for Frank, like starting to mature, wanting to get his life in order. He may have even been thinking about going to school getting a better, more respectable job. I don't know, becoming a carpenter, maybe? Um, so, I think Frank may have confided this in Mary, and somehow this triggered Mary. PTSD and all that, you know? Bringing up past memories of carpenters and her relationship with John. I don't know, who's to say this is all speculation. But something triggered some kind of rage deep within Mary's soul. On October 24th, 1890, Mary invited Phoebe over for some tea or something, you know, just whatever, something to get her over to her house. So at some point, Phoebe had become aware of Mary's existence, but to what extent? I don't know. Anyway, so Phoebe put baby Phoebe into her pram stroller and heads over to Mary's house. Later that day, around 4 p.m., Mary's neighbors had reported hearing loud screams and sounds of violence coming from her home. But, you know, did no other investigation and pretty much continued on with their life. Like, I'm just imagining this, this man next door reading his paper because, you know, that's basically all they had going on in the 1800s, right? Um, he hears something, and he gently folds down the corner of his newspaper and says to his wife, Hmm, dear, I hear sounds of violence. <laughs> oh well, don't affect me. <laughs> what? <sighs> Later that night, a woman's body, Phoebe, 
was found on top of a pile of trash. Her skull had been crushed and her head was almost completely severed from her body. Rage much? <laughs> About a mile away, a pram was found soaked, soaked with blood. In another town over, another town over, they found baby Phoebe, who had been smothered. What the hell, right? Like, who can, who can hurt a baby? Like, just no. At first, no one suspected Mary. Then, during the investigation, someone had mentioned seeing Mary pushing a pram late at night. This chick doesn't even have a baby, so that's a little suspicious. Things are not looking good for Mary because she's also got the connection to Frank and stuff, you know, so it's, it's not looking good for Mary. The police head over to Mary's house just to ask a few questions. They go into Mary's house, and once inside, they are in shock. This chick violently murdered two people. Well, violently murdered one, smothered another. But you'd think she would have cleaned up, right? No. They found blood all over the walls, on the ceiling, on her skirt and apron. <laughs> they also found bloody matted hair on a fire poker and a carving knife. So the cops were all like, what's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> and Mary's all like, oh, what? What? Oh, oh, that, that's nothing, you know? And the cops were all like, that don't look like nothing, lady. What's up? You know? And she's like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Is that what you're thinking? I've been having a rat problem, so killing mice is a messy job. You know? You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> and she points to this, like, deputy detective. First week on the job, right? She points to him and is all like, this guy, this guy, he gets it, he gets it. And he's all, <laughs> deputy detective just starts sweating nervously, like, I, 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 I don't, I, I don't get it, I don't get it. <laughs> anyway, so obviously, they charge Mary with murder, right? So at the trial, she's on the stand like, no, I, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I was killing mice. I was killing mice. I did not do this. The whole time, she's just staring at deputy detective, never breaking eye contact. This event, like, traumatizes a deputy detective, you know, like, for the rest of his life. He has trouble sleeping because every night for years, he's just dreaming about her on the stand, staring at him creepily, just repeating, I was killing mice. I was killing mice. <laughs> and when Mary began walking down from the stand, she was slowly chanting, killing mice, killing mice, killing mice. You know, with this creepy smile on her face, slowly getting closer and closer to him. He's afraid one of these nights, she's actually going to get him. <laughs> Poor de deputy detective, right? Anyway, so <laughs> Mary was found guilty and hung December 23rd, 1890. The end. I know, <laughs> deputy detective is not real, but the whole, everything else is real, okay? And the chanting as she was getting off of the stand, coming down from the stand, she was chanting, killing mice, killing mice, killing mice. What? What? Okay, so, dude, I'm upset about Phoebe and baby Phoebe. Super upset about baby Phoebe. Like, okay, she didn't do anything wrong. She was just living her life with her husband and their baby, just chugging along. Okay, something happened, something happened that, and I'm like, I don't know what it is. That's why I was like, I'm thinking that he must have been feeling guilty and like, 
and said, you know, Mary, I don't know. I don't know if we can continue like this. You know, I'm feeling bad. I, I like my wife. I like my kid. I like my life. And this, maybe he was like, this can't, this can't happen. You know, I, I, I want to be more respectable and do better in my life. I'm just assuming. I have no idea. I've got, maybe she just got jealous. She was like, nah, I don't want to share you anymore. And this kid's in the way too, you know? What happened? I don't know. But, <sighs> isn't it a crazy story? Like, <sighs> first of all, okay, so you're, you're going to be with this guy. First of all, you're going to be cheating. And then be with a man who's cheating, but then tell him to m marry his side piece like what that's weird like this chick it must have been messed up in the head but anyway so yeah also i did read i didn't include it in this story because i was just like mm, oh, oh no but there's lots of theories that this woman mary piercy could also possibly be jack the ripper because there's evidence that jack the ripper is female i don't know I thought it was a little, a little, like, stretching. It's like, you're never gonna know. You're never gonna know about Jack the Ripper. It's over. You know, but they were, like, living in the same time, in the same area. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so, see what I mean? It, it's a little different ASMR. It's, it's ASMR, like, not ASMR. It's a little different true crime. But it, it is true crime story. You know, it's just... This is what happened in my head when I read it. If you want to find, like, the actual real story, just go to Wikipedia. It's a very short story, and all, all the facts are in my story. I just make it more entertaining. Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon.